Welcome back, everyone. We are here today on our Total Wellness Tuesday episode of the week. This show is going to be dedicated to Alzheimer's and how the ApoE4 gene actually leaves you more susceptible to developing Alzheimer's. But here's the thing, and I always like to share this with you, knowledge is power. And just because you may have this particular gene does not necessarily mean that you will ever get Alzheimer's. So I want to repeat that. If you know your genetics and you know that you have the you're a carrier for the ApoE4 gene, it does not mean that you are destined to have Alzheimer's. It just means that you are more genetically predisposed. And I will also say this, even if you have an ApoE3 gene or two of those, and we'll talk about those in just a minute, what they mean and how you find it out, it also doesn't mean that you are completely safe from getting Alzheimer's and that you kind of get that get out of jail free card. So that's why, you know, really knowledge is power and being able to go a little bit more in depth on these issues is going to save you or family member lots of time worrying. So let's start to just break it down, go through it. I have a whole three part series on Alzheimer's. So I'll definitely link that up for you today. All you have to do is go to stephencabral.com forward slash 2342, stephencabral.com forward slash 2342 right now. And I will link up those previous Alzheimer's shows, which you definitely want to check out because I give you uh, exactly how Alzheimer's starts. We know this now. It's not a mystery. And how it's not one thing, that it's multiple things that you can be lab testing for these and actually see it start to develop. And if it's starting to develop, well, then you can begin to reverse Alzheimer's. Yes, you can actually reverse Alzheimer's. Now, I have a Friday review. I did a case study where nine out of 10 people were able to reverse Alzheimer's or at least stop and halt Alzheimer's in its tracks. Only one person wasn't able to, and they were in a terminal stage of Alzheimer's. So we have to understand that, again, please do not always listen to the first um, you know, headline that you read or whatever it might be. There is, there really is always hope. All right, so let's get into the show. I'm going to keep this very straightforward. I'm not going to get too in the weeds. I don't think that that serves anybody, but I'm always happy to do follow-up shows and additional questions. So the ApoE gene, so APO, ApoE stands for apolipoprotein, okay? So apolipoprotein E, because there's different forms. Um, and it's involved in the metabolism of fats, namely cholesterol. So it's actually produced by astrocytes in the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. And it's essentially a carrier for cholesterol, the LDL, but we'll talk about cholesterol in just a moment, um, in order to transport it to the brain and certain neurons in the body. All right. So let me just unpack that for a minute. So basically our peripheral nervous system is everything that we can essentially respond to in terms of sight, smell, touch, uh, anything to do with kind of stressors on the body. So we call them proprioceptors. There's a lot of different ways to, to go about this. But basically, you get a response from the outside world into the body, or you can even have a thought. That counts as well. And then what happens is the central nervous system can respond through what's called the autonomic nervous system, and that's basically fight or flight. That's sympathetic nervous system. Or rest and relax, and that's parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, so... The more fight or flight we are, the more issues we have with inflammation, et cetera. Kind of keep that in mind because that's very important for the APOE genotype. All right. So there's three main genotypes that we look at for APOE variants. All right. So we have APOE2, and the 2 is much more rare. So it's a smaller percent of the population. I've gone through this. I'll definitely link up the other show on this before. I'm not going to go too deep on it. But if you have an APOE2 variant, then you have a much uh, less, you have a lesser chance for getting Alzheimer's. It's the least possible with an APOE2. It's much more rare to have the APOE2. Um, it's an older, much older uh, genotype. We're talking about like, you know, millions of years old. Uh, the most common is the ApoE3. So ApoE3 is basically what we call neutral for Alzheimer's. You may get it, you may not get it, but it's not protective, but it's not going to increase your chances. ApoE2, more protective. ApoE3, neutral. Now there's ApoE4, all right? So the variant with a 4 means that you are at greater risk for Alzheimer's disease uh, and it's associated with earlier onset Alzheimer's. But it's also associated with a host of other issues, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But again, there's always a way around them. So if you have an, if you have 
well, let me take this back a little bit. You get one ApoE variant from each biological parent. So what does that mean? Well, you could get an ApoE3 from one parent and an ApoE3 from another parent. We call that homozygous. So you have two of the same variant. Now, some people could have an ApoE2 and an ApoE4. It's possible. Most people, they're a, a double three, so ApoE3, three, or they're an ApoE3, and they might also have an ApoE4. All right, so if you have one four, right, allele, well, I don't want to confuse things too much, but we'll call it a variant then. If you have an ApoE, ApoE4 variant, you are two to three times, so you have a two to three X more likely chance of getting Alzheimer's, okay? So if you were just an ApoE33, well, you have a two to three X greater chance than a 33 of getting Alzheimer's. Doesn't mean you're gonna get it, but you have a greater chance. Now, if you have a double variant, if you have two copies of the ApoE4, you have a significantly greater risk for getting Alzheimer's. It is an eight to 12 fold risk. Now, again, before you begin to worry, if you have this, it's a smaller percent of the population. So if we look at the whole population, somewhere around last time, the research that I did on this, it was somewhere around three to 5% had a double four. There's somewhere around 20% have, 21% have an ApoE3-4, okay? So it's about 26% total have at least one four variant. So you're, you're looking at about a fourth of the population, right? So it's, it's very common, 25%. Now, again, keep that in mind. So when I start to talk about cholesterol and saturated fats and all these things, you'll, you'll begin to understand, you know, where this is coming from. So here's the thing. Just because even if you're a double four, you have an eight to 12 greater risk of Alzheimer's, it does not mean you're going to get it. And the reason is, is that there are specific factors of why someone gets Alzheimer's. Now, if you have a double four, you certainly have to be more careful. That's the only thing. And you might say, well, that's not fair. Listen, like, I get it. I totally understand. I've got a lot of, uh, I've, I don't have the best genetics myself, right? And so I'm always saying, well, you know, I'm very prone to inflammation. I'm very prone to poor detox. I'm very prone to all these things, you know, but it is what it is, you know? And, and you could always like, I always look at it again. I, I try to use perspective. It, like it could be worse. It really could. So let's take it all, you know, a lighthearted for right now, because there's always something that you can do about it. There's no doubt about it. And, and I don't believe that if you're following uh, what you should be doing, uh, that you're going to get Alzheimer's, and especially since we know how to reverse it, right? So I'm going to link up those podcasts as well. All right. So uh, here are the associations besides Alzheimer's of what ApoE4 affects, and that is why, and, and then I'm going to go through uh, what we can do about it, all right? So uh, more prone to brain atrophy, more prone to neuronal toxicity. What does that mean? It means the neurons, so inside of the brain, where we're sending uh, message to message through the electricity, right? The synaptic clefts, the neurons, they're sending messages, thoughts, et cetera, uh, more prone to toxicity. Uh, more chance for plaque buildup in the brain, uh, aberrant brain activity. We're talking about poor metabolism of cholesterol, uh, poor glucose metabolism, so blood sugar, more prone to type 2 diabetes, uh, issues with vascular function, poor mitochondrial function, and not very good at rebuilding neurons. Okay, so let's just go over a couple more things because I want to explain this, I think, to a, a better degree. So um, ApoE4 is intimately connected with cholesterol. So its job is to essentially shuttle cholesterol throughout the body and specifically to the brain for what could be considered both positive and negative reasons. So positive reasons could be that cholesterol is needed by the cells in order to properly form the lipid membrane. So that's a good thing. Uh, the negative would be that there's a large amount of inflammation and cholesterol may be there to essentially create some of that plaque or build the glue is what we like to call it in the endothelial tissue of the arteries, but also in the brain too. So it's interesting because when you look at people with the ApoE4 variant, you have to understand that they're more prone to higher levels of cholesterol. And this is why I go back to, you have to be very careful with who you listen to online and believing any one source is the end all be all. Because if you would listen to a lot of these carnivore-based people, uh, they would tell you that you can eat all of the meat you want, all of the egg yolks you want, 
and it won't affect your cholesterol at all. That cholesterol is simply an endogenous process. Your liver does make about 80% of the cholesterol in your body. All of that's true. But what their problem is that they're, it's not nuanced enough. They're not totally peeling back the onion. So basically, they're taking care of, let's say, like two-thirds of the population. Like, that's true for them. But it's absolutely detrimental and I would say irresponsible, even though they don't know what they're doing. Uh, like, they're not purposely causing harm. It's their truth, right? So most health, health practitioners live their truth. It works for them, so they want to share it with you. And I think that's a beautiful thing because they're going to be helping a lot of people. The problem is that it doesn't help all people and it actually hurts some people. And so I know that the Cabral concept will never be like the, um, top rated, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm totally fine with that because I'm unwilling to take one stance and say, this is the way that it is for everybody and just magnetize all of the people who believe in that. And we live in an echo chamber. Like you should only eat raw meat or that plants are bad or that keto is the absolute best for everyone. I won't say that. What I'll do is I'll share with you when keto may be best and for how long, when it's okay to decrease your overall carbohydrate load because of uh, gut-based issues or autoimmune issue, but for only how long and then how it actually affects the microbiome. So my only goal is to get to the truth. That's it. Like that's literally it. Um, and so my goal is not to build the biggest social media following. My goal is not to build the biggest podcast in the world. My goal is to help people who really want the truth and, um, and that aren't so dogmatic about everything, that they can keep an open mind, and they too want to search for the truth. And that's really what we're going through, because we still have a lot more to learn about APOE4, but I can tell you for sure that people who are on our high cholesterol diet that have an APOE4 gene variant, especially if it's a double four, are not doing themselves any favors. They are more at risk for cardiovascular issues. They're at more risk for high cholesterol and a lot of other factors that are not to their benefit. So again, I just caution you if that if you're a health practitioner, understand that, that all of this information is nuanced and that some people do totally fine with egg yolks and, and eating beef liver multiple times per day and all of these things. And I'm not against them. I've never been against eggs and I've never been against organ meat and I've never been against meat. I'm against too much of it for most people. And for some people, they have to be a little bit more careful. They, I mean, a keto diet for an APOE4 would be highly detrimental. And you might say, well, it's been shown to help in cases of Alzheimer's. Like, we have to understand, only because you're looking at one factor, which is glucose metabolism. So again, like there are layers to peel back and we have to understand that um, we humans are unique. Now we're not wildly unique. There's not like, you know, there's not hundreds of different variants. There's three for this APOE that we're talking about. But I just wanted to share that with you because if you are an APOE4 carrier, we'll call it, um, I think that I think that you're going to want to err on the side of caution with using a lot of saturated fats in your diet, a lot of cholesterol in your diet, and a very high fat diet. I think that you want to err on the side of all of those because even if we were wrong about this initial research, uh, there's no detriment. Like that's the nice thing, right? So you can have a moderate amount of fat in your diet. What's currently recommended is between 10% to 30% of your diet maximum would be from fat. And then a smaller amount of that would be from saturated fat. Monounsaturated fat would be your preferred fat type. And I've got lots of podcasts on that too. Again, you don't have to agree with this. I'm not saying that your belief in saturated fat is wrong. What I'm saying, at least for 26% of the population, it may not be right. Okay. So that is that. Um, I wanted to share just one more um, item with you on this because I thought that this was uh, actually, I thought it was very, very helpful. I, I love um, I love infographics and I'll see if we can get access to this one. But it, it's interesting because so the APOE2 variant or carry is very, it's much more rare. So we're not going to go too deep on that one. Um, but the APOE3, which would be considered neutral, on all the things I'm about to read you, APOE4 is more at risk, and I'm going to tell you why at the very end, okay? So just stick with me for one second. So we talked about the uh, toxicity in the body, not able to clear toxicity from the neurons or the nervous system as easily. All right, we talked about poor uh, ATP production. That has to do with the mitochondria, so poor energy production. We talked about poor clearance of plaque, so beta amyloid plaque in the brain. If you've never heard about that, I talk about it on my um, Alzheimer's shows because it's one of the biggest factors with Alzheimer's. Um, overall inflammation, so people with this APOE4, more inflammation from prostaglandins, from interleukins, from TNF-alpha, from reactive oxygen species, right? So they don't do well with the inflammation like by any 
stretch of the imagination at all. Uh, they are poor clearers of cholesterol, so their own production of cholesterol from the liver, as well as cholesterol that you take in from food sources. Very poor job at clearing it from the body. Okay, so that's, again, fact. Uh, impaired glucose metabolism, so they simply don't do as good of a job maintaining a balanced blood sugar level. And the last part is, oh, um, it's called uh, me tau mediated neurodegeneration. All right, I wasn't going to go that deep on that, but basically, it's it's a faster breakdown, a more catabolic nature of the actual neurons in the body. So not ideal if you're looking at good, strong brain function, cognitive ability, and more. Now, here's the thing that I want to share with you, though, and that's why this doesn't have to be as overwhelming. It is an inflammatory process that affects everything that I read uh, to you right then. So if you don't understand neurotoxicity or beta amyloid plaque or um, you know cholesterol clearance or any of these things, I just want you to understand it is inflammatory based. So an ApoE4 is more prone to inflammation, and because of that, it affects all of these different things. So your job now is not to worry about everything under the sun because you can't worry about that, right? So your job now is to say, how can I get out of fight or flight, the sympathetic nervous system, and how can I shift to more of a parasympathetic, low inflammatory state? Well, we know that there is such thing as an anti-inflammatory diet. There is a reason why on the Cabral concept, I say you start with a Mediterranean style diet. You And right when I say that, people, again, they're like, everybody's always ready to like, again, jump in on one little point. We just need to we just need to take a deep breath a lot of the time. Just take a deep breath. And you have to understand is you don't need to eat bread and pasta. You don't need to eat bread and pasta on a Mediterranean diet. I don't eat bread and pasta on a Mediterranean diet. It's my one cheat meal for the week. I eat it then. Every single day, you don't need to eat it. But you start there as a basis. And high antioxidant foods, brightly colored fruits and vegetables. And then people get all worried about the fruit that they're eating. Go with more vegetables if you want. Go with lower glycemic fruit. Again, I'm, I have plenty of shows on the Mediterranean diet. I'll try to link up some of those today. Um, I have one on my Mediterranean diet. I have one on the Nordic diet. I've got all sorts of different variations, but it's at least a starting point. Then you want to look at, okay, what's going on with your gut function? What's going on with cortisol? What's going on with thyroid? So you want to look at those other factors, and I have those on other shows. But today, I just wanted to show you the link and so that you can realize that if you begin to rebalance your body at a homeostatic level, at an equilibrium-based level, well, then your inflammation is balanced. And if your inflammation is balanced and you're not going on any fad-based diet, but you're eating normally your likelihood of getting Alzheimer's is actually low. So hopefully today's podcast was helpful. I'm happy to do follow-ups, happy to answer your questions. Just let me know. I'm here for you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Always feel free to share the show to anyone you believe it can serve. One more thing I wanted to add just before you go is that we will actually be finding a lab partner to work with to test people's APOE and other aging-based factors this fall. Uh, it's not going to be done through Equal Life. I just want to find a trusted partner. I'm testing about six different companies right now to try to find people this information because I know, and I just thought of this, I'm going to get, you know, like 100 messages. How do I know my APOE type? You can always ask your medical doctor to run it. No doubt about it. Maybe they will. Uh, but we'll find a simple at-home lab test because I know you can do it with saliva or a, a simple blood drop. So I just have to find a lab. Um, more information information to come. Stay tuned. I'll try to make sure that we get it by like the fall. So we'll say like September. So just keep checking back in. Uh, appreciate you, everyone. Take care.